Hey guys, hope everybody's doing well with this uh, situation that's going on right now. Uh, hope you guys are taking care of your families. I know it's been kind of hard. We're not going to be able to meet on campus anymore. Uh, so I'm going to start doing this video labs. Unfortunately, I cannot keep with the schedule that we have on Saturdays and do a live stream because, you know, my house is kind of crazy right now with all the kids and uh, dogs and cat and all that stuff. Anyways, so I'm going to have you guys uh, make sure you guys have all the operating systems that we're going to be using uh, throughout the end of the course. Uh, first one, of course, will be Ubuntu uh, Server 18.04, like we downloaded in a class. So you just go to the Ubuntu page here, uh, click on the downloads, and as soon as you click over here on 18.04 on the server, it should automatically start downloading for you here. Uh, the next one will be CentOS. Uh, just go to the page here on the download, click on the DVD ISO, and then it's going to give you a bunch of mirror sites. You just click one of them. Doesn't matter which, uh, preferably the ones on top, uh, but any of them will do, and they'll start downloading here in the bottom. Uh, the next couple we're going to do is uh, some Windows boxes because we're going to be doing some labs uh, that will require Windows. Uh, it's not going to be nothing fancy, just going to set up a domain controller because uh, I want to have you guys see how you can integrate with uh, Windows environment on a Linux box. It's very uh, seldom that you get that kind of stuff uh, brought to the classroom. A lot of people, whenever they're teaching Linux, is solely on Linux. I want to make sure you guys have some stuff that actually happens in the field a lot. And one of the things we're going to be doing this is uh, showing how uh, to do the authentication, uh, have your Linux pig back of uh, Windows Active Directory for authentication, which is something that you typically you're going to see in the field like that. It's like always going to happen. Uh, very seldom you're going to see a uh, Linux box uh, spun up with its own directory services. Very seldom. Anyway, so we're going to want to go to the Microsoft Evaluation Center. It's pretty standard uh, website that they have. If you go over here and you, uh, you can see the products that they have for uh, trials, we have the Windows Server uh, 2019, which is the one we're going to be downloading. Uh, we're going to be doing the essentials. Uh, just fill out the form, pretty standard. And just click continue. Select the language. Download. And it's going to start kicking in here, as you can see. If it doesn't start automatically, you just click on the link. Uh, we're also going to get a Windows 10 box because I want to see if you guys, uh, if we can set up a Bastion type of uh, environment uh, so you guys can see uh, a definite definite application of uh, Windows in a workplace environment. Typically, they're going to be the servers in the server form and you're going to use a Windows box to uh, connect to them. So we're going to uh, explore that type of uh, engagement versus setting up a, a Windows uh, GUI, which is, like I said, very rarely you're going to see that kind of application. Anyways, so just download the ISO, same procedure here. You're going to go to the Evaluation Center here, uh, select Windows 10 Enterprise, uh, fill out the little form, and uh, click Continue. Download, you want the 64-bit English, download and then you're going to start seeing it here on the bottom uh, so we're going to leave those cooking in and then we'll pick it up with uh, VirtualBox uh, in the next video okay guys so now that we finished downloading the the images of the operating systems that we downloaded um, one thing I want you guys to do, I mean, you guys, this is kind of optional, but I strongly advise you guys make like a little folder, like I'm making it right now on a desktop, just to put all those images in there. Uh, it, just ma it makes it for easy access whenever we're looking for them anyway, so. I uh, also, uh, I'm going to rename uh, some of these, um, the Windows Server one. So it's easy to identify. As you can see, it comes 
with a weird set of numbers and uh, this is all pertains to the build of the operating system and all that. So now we're going to open VirtualBox. And begin doing uh, other things that we we'll begin setting up an environment that we can just like build machines with these. Uh, the goal here initially is to make uh, what is called a golden uh, box that you guys can just clone it later uh, to make different uh, lab environments. And my goal with this is that you guys are going to be able to do this even after this class is completed as you guys uh, move on to different IT training. So uh, now it's kind of like the same process that we did in class, uh, but slightly different. Like we're going to set up a CentOS box and a Ubuntu box here, and they're going to be like template uh, machines. We're not going to, we're just going to set up the base uh, image or for lack of a better term, um, f uh, with the right configurations, basic RAM, the hard drive all configured uh, the way that we want all the other boxes that we create from the Linux environment perspective uh, all the same way. And if we, we naming them like for example the CentOS box will be named CentOS, capital letter. Uh, now we're going to make the Ubuntu box um, also the same way as we did um, the CentOS box. As you can see when you type the name Ubuntu the whole configuration of the box kind of goes into that mode there uh, and selects the version and um, I had the little error there because I also have an Ubuntu uh, image already on that folder so I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, name something slightly different like Ubuntu main and um, set up the same basic uh, RAM two gigs of RAM hard drive is gonna be about the same size as well uh, 20 gigs. Uh, it's, it's pretty uh, decent size for a Linux environment. Dynamically allocated. So once they're created, we're going to go ahead and uh, add the ISOs to them. Go into storage. Click on the little CD there. Choose the optical drive, uh, which it, if you guys did the same thing I did, everything's going to be under the desktop, under the ISOs folder. So for this one, I'm selecting the CentOS box. Next one, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to select the Ubuntu instead. Click OK, and they're good to go. We can both go ahead and start both boxes. We're going to do the installation of both operating systems simultaneously. It takes a little bit of a process, but we're going we're gonna to go through the wizard first as they pop open. Ubuntu, CentOS. Should be both coming in nicely. Uh, like I said, it's the same setup I went over in class. <laughs> Except that we're setting up an environment that we're actually going to look use for uh, uh, future labs as well. It's that basic installation on each. Uh, on the CentOS box, uh, you guys can go ahead and escape that, that uh, check that is doing. Basically, it's verifying that if the media uh, of this CD um, or ISO image is good. 
we don't need to do that because we downloaded for the source. We know there was no breaks in the connection, so everything was good. So just uh, click on that box, uh, press escape. Um, on the left side, as you can see, I'm already uh, beginning the Ubuntu installation. Everything basic, we, we're not doing anything fancy here. So for name, I want you guys to use uh, student as the name uh, for both uh, boxes, really. For the server name, uh, just go ahead and uh, name Ubuntu. I don't think the CentOS asked for the information, but if you if you did, would probably just name it CentOS as well. Like I said, this is, these are not going to be the final names of these machines. Uh, I mean, it is going to be the final name for these machines, but we're not going to be using them. Once they are done, they're just going to be used as a cookie cutter uh, type of operating system, so we don't have to go through this installation again every time we need to load a new Wind, uh, Linux uh, machine. So for password, the same old password that we had. Uh, PA111 word spells like this. Let me open notepad here. So the same password. Um, but then again, I'm not going to be troubleshooting you guys' boxes anymore since we're doing this remotely. Uh, so you guys can go ahead and uh, just. Uh, use whatever password makes you feel comfortable for the extent of this class uh, i'm going to keep this uh, format as uh, all the lab machines that i'm setting up right now so it's going to go through the installation uh, ubuntu we're not going to touch that again until we have to reboot it uh, remember in the installation we have to remove the media uh, before rebooting, I'm going to show that again. Uh, so in the sentence box, remember we have to go to the installation thing, click done. And then it's good to go. Can begin the installation now. I'm going to set up the root password. Same password. Click done. Now we're going to go to the user creation screen. Uh, we're going to go ahead and make this uh, student user as a sudo administrator. Uh, so we're going to tag the little uh, make this user administrator thing. Uh, for username, I want you guys to use sysadmin or whatever you guys feel is more comfortable to you guys. But for the extents of these labs, I'm going to be using sysadmin for uh, the default user that we're creating for these operating systems. So same password, PA1 word. Done. And it's going to proceed to the installation. We're not going to need to touch these boxes uh, until uh, the installation is over, which is going to take a little bit. So we pick it back up in a little bit. So as you can see now, both operating systems have finished the installation. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, reboot them. Uh, also, remember to remove the media. I forgot to do this on the CentOS one, so going to have to do that a little bit. Uh, for Ubuntu, for the most part, does a good job removing itself, but it's still going to request that you uh, do that. So uh, let's go back here to the CentOS. Just, you see how it's selected there? Just force a mount. Over here, just check, as you can see, Ubuntu is not uh, selected. So just click enter and it's going to cycle uh, the machine. For uh, the CentOS box, just go ahead and let's just reset the box. I'm going to click that host key, which is the right control key to unlock it. 
uh, the good news is, is we're going to be able to do the uh, VirtualBox um, guest editions uh, for Santos. I was able to get it to work, so um, we're going to be going through that as we set these boxes up. And so that's uh, pretty much it. They're going to both boot into their uh, operating systems, and we pick it up from there. So both machines have uh, finished rebooting here. Uh, so let's go ahead and log in on them. Let's open the box. Want to do an AppCAD upgrade. I mean update uh, to update the repositories and then uh, an AppCAD upgrade. Uh, to do the updates uh, required for those boxes. So I want to make sure that everything is up to date before uh, we call these two boxes done. Hmm. Uh, okay. So, uh, oh, on the Santos, we gotta accept the license agreement. Click done. Uh, oh, on the Ubuntu box, there we're gonna have to go into root user mode, so we can f finalize the update here. So the reason for that is because um, I don't think the default user is created as uh, with pseudo privileges. So let's go ahead and do this. Upgrade. Let's try for yes. And everything should go now. Well, that's intended. In the package list, yes, it's going to start updating itself now. So we can move on to the sentence box here. As you can see, we accepted the license agreement. We can go ahead and uh, finish the configuration. It's going to go through its uh, boot cycle there. Right, all the Ubuntu boxes is updating itself. So once that Ubuntu box is done, pretty much we're not gonna have anything else to be doing that anymore uh, for basic stuff. So we can go ahead and uh, close that off. Uh, so here on the CentOS box, let's go ahead and uh, click Student, do the login. Secondly up. So right now, as you can see, like to get out of the census box, we definitely need to uh, press the right control key. Uh, that frees up the host key. Um, so we can actually move the mouse around. Um, the goal here is that we're going to uh, in finally be able to install the guest additions and making sure that our CentOS box is going to be uh, set in a way that we don't need to do that anymore. So let's go ahead and finish the setup on the CentOS box here. English, type in English. Turn off the privacy location, you guys don't need that. Is guys don't need this either, so start using CentOS. Yeah, so that it's kind of done right now. We just gotta do a few more steps. Let's close that getting help stuff. Okay, guys, so we're going to uh, handle that problem with the CentOS OS not being able to do the uh, 
guest additions. To start with, I'm going to go into the terminal. The first thing we need to do this operating system is um, update it. And this is going to take a bit. Let's just go into root mode just because it's easier. Okay, so now that we root, just go yum, update. Oh, just forgot one thing here. Uh, so for some reason, CentOS by default doesn't have the NIC on, so we need to make sure that we are properly connected. So because you just click over here on this drop down, and you have this wired off, just click there and click connect. And all of a sudden you're gonna see it spark up over here and it's not connected. So if we don't do that, we're not gonna be able to update it. So just go yum, update, and it's gonna do its thing. It's gonna be a while. Uh, another thing here, we're gonna, um, once everything is said and done, before we done with this golden image here for uh, Santos, we're gonna make sure that uh, this Nick problem is fully resolved because we don't wanna be uh, cloning these boxes into new machines and having to mess with the Nick uh, again and again and again. It kind of defeats the purpose. So we're gonna make sure that that's settled out. Okay. Okay, guys, before I move on to the uh, installation of the VirtualBox guest editions, we're going to do something because we, we did some updates here, right? So if we go back up here, you're going to see at the very end, we got a new kernel installed. Uh, so and the new version of the kernel is only going to be effective once we reboot the machine. That's per design. So if you do... Uh, you name dash a if I'm correct. Yes, you will see the kernel version here. Um, what is it right here? So it's a 4.18 dot blah blah blah. So if you go up here, right on the end of the update, you have what is it version? EL8 dash underscore. Let's see, let's compare those two. Yes. So, a quick way for you to see that if you do um, LS on the boot directory, you get to see uh, that we have indeed two versions installed, and these are the ones. It's kind of it's, it's better to compare it this way. So one of these versions here, right? I, in fact, it, we have really three versions, three kernels here, right? One of them is the rescue uh, kernel, right? In case something happens to the box. Then you have the kernel that's actually active. And in this case here, we have the old kernel, right? So what we're gonna do here, the first thing we're gonna do, we're going to uh, reboot this machine, right? And after uh, we reboot this guy, we're going to um, remove the old kernels. And anyways, guys, um, I was looking here some uh, attempts. I actually did an attempt on trying to remove this kernel here because uh, I was having issues. But if you look at it, um, this is the way to manually remove the kernel. This is the old kernel that we had. As you can see, there is a dependency here that cannot be resolved uh, when you remove. So there are two conflicting problems here. Uh, we cannot remove this kernel for this reason. So you're gonna go ahead and skip on that. But the reason why you typically remove the kernels is either pass uh, vulnerability scan, or if you wanna make sure that, you know, you have the least, um, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, kernels in the system uh, because there it's not really a need except if you just update it to a new kernel and you're trying to make sure that um, things go well and if they don't you're able to revert back so you never have more than like uh, two to three 
uh, kernels at a system at any given time. But typically remove a, uh, for uh, vulnerability scan purposes. Anyway, so now that we got that settled, let's go ahead and uh, do the steps to install uh, the VirtualBox Guest Edition. So this tool, we're going to be using DNF for that. So that'll be TNF install. And the series of packages we have to do, one of them is star, uh, the other one is bzip, two, kernel, devel, Now you see what I'm doing here? I'm actually making a command because you name the char is a way to see the kernel version. So if you look here, uh, kernel devel, now we are bringing up uh, the kernel version by calling to this command, right? I'm gonna bring kernel headers. Kernel headers, Perl, GCC, make ELF utils lib LF. I verified everything is typed correctly. So install, install, bzip2, kernel, devel. Let me see one thing here. There's a dash. Then the variable with um, the command. Kernel headers, per GCC. Make so these are all packages that we're installing. So let's just run through them. Some of them might be installed already on the machine, however, some of them may not. Okay, so now that that's done, let's go ahead and uh, as you can see, I have a bunch of videos here. Um, something I'm learning is to do all this compilation, anyways. Um, some pretty cool uh, open source tools are found uh, for these recordings that I'm making for you guys, but uh, that's another class. <laughs> Anyways, so once this is done, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and insert the guest edition CD. And that should automatically prompt as it did. Uh, I should just go ahead and hit run. identify that we are admins. This is basically a graphical way of doing sudo. So everything should run smoothly here. Takes a little bit of a time. So now, as you can see here, is building the modules for the kernel. As you can see here, every single kernel that you have installed requires this. Um, so if we were to update this guy, there's a big possibility that if we update this kernel, we would uh, need um, to run through this again. Uh, it's a possibility. But typically, I haven't had any problems uh, 
with that kind of stuff before. Uh, once you have the guest editions in, typically, uh, it, it copies over all the modules. But if you were to run the on the one that was previously installed, um, then we'll have issues. I'm going to pause the video here. And what's going to happen is, is whenever this is completed, this window sh is just going to disappear. It's not going to give you a, oh, it's completed now, or anything like that. So never mind, I thought it was just going to disappear, but it actually asked you uh, to, plas to press return to close the window. Anyways, so now that this is complete, uh, the next thing we're going to do is typically we're just going to reboot it and it should work properly. But what we're going to do is fix the issue that we have with the network card. Uh, so if you guys go into vim slash etsy slash I believe is this config config fig network scripts and that's the nick that is a value here on on boot you see this this here is telling for the nick not to be initialized on boot so we're going to switch this to yes escape colon wq also when we set up uh static ips for centos box this is uh, the route that we're going to be taking so now that this is done we're just going to go ahead and reboot this guy and when it comes back up we should be able to uh, maximize so before it finishes rebooting let me just touch base here so i have this this instructions here so you name that shay it gives you a lot of uh, of not just the kernel information but a lot of the box information if you do you name dash r that's just the kernel um, also these are a couple ways to delete the uh, remove kernels um, this is using dnf this is using uh, yum uh, this is a yum utility uh, that you get installed with that another way is just running yum remove and kernel kernel dot basically the value of uh, uh, the, basically the value of the kernel because typically if you run you name the char you you're gonna see the pattern there how it, it kind of looks um, you can also find the old kernels by going to uh, ls and doing ls on um, slash boot so all the kernels should have some sort of a Samless there. Uh, and for VirtualBox, box, guest editions, editions, run these first. Run this line first, right? So this should, should work properly. Um, if you happen to do it, uh, without, like if you do an update on the system and you have a new kernel installed but you don't reboot that box and you run this and then you install the VirtualBox guest editions, uh, the new kernel that you install, so like if you have to reboot, you'll find that it's going to look as if the guest editions didn't get installed. This is because uh, it didn't install for the new kernel, installed on the old kernel. So we need to be always remember that as soon as you finish doing the updates uh, that we mentioned in a previous video, I'm um, free section of the video, um, that uh, you run um, the, the this command after the reboot, not before. So only start the guest editions after the, the new kernel is, is installed and actively running. So as you can see here, we can already see the mouse. You remember this is the Windows. I don't have to click anymore. If I were to make it a bigger, as you can see, now I have a full screen CentOS box. 
So if I go ahead and PA word to log in. Another thing I wanted to point out is uh, as we change on the NIC, uh, you got to notice, I don't know if you noticed, but you already showed here that the, the network interface card is already on. We don't need to go click on that anymore. So it's finished booting. See, as you can see here, it's already enabled by default because we've changed uh, those values. So this box, we can consider it as a good golden image. So now we have a perfectly good uh, Ubuntu. Uh, we're not going to do guest editions on Ubuntu, even though you could technically install it, but it's not really needed anyways. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead and uh, shut down this guy. And we're also going to shut down this guy here too. And this one can go GUI. And power off. So they're both going to go to sleep. And when they are done, going through their cycles, and they're both powered off here. We're going to go into uh, the next step, which is um, making the clones. So you guys have uh, an idea how that works. So as we can see here, we have the two golden images. We're not going to boot these guys again. So what we're going to do now is uh, let's make one clone of the CentOS box. Let's name this guy... Uh, Test CentOS. This is just so you guys can see how the process works. So, this option here include NAT, network adapters, and everything. We don't want that. We want to generate a new MAC address because we want to make sure that all these guys are individuals, right? So we're not keeping anything that is like uh, from the previous box. Just gonna make a new box that has most of the, basically it's like a snapshot, right? Of what this guy is. And it's gonna increment on the changes that we provide to it. But essentially it's gonna be using this guy. We're gonna make a linked clone. Uh, what a linked clone is, is a machine that has the basic hard disk here, but it, it basically it just increments open on what is here, right? But it's essentially using this guy as a as a link. So if you if you read the definition here, a new machine will be created, but the virtual hard disk will be tied to the disk files of the original box. Now, if it was a full clone, clone it would be an exact copy onto a new uh, hard drive. Um, the link clone saves a lot on resources, so that's one of the ways why we're going to be doing that. So we're going to do this, make a link clone and go ahead and boot it you're gonna see that we have a brand new uh, box that behaves exactly as the other one did as you can see here you already see uh, the kernels that reside on that previous golden image You're also going to see that the guest editions are going to be working, as well as the NIC should be on it as well. All the things that we changed that were particular to the golden census box are going to be working in this guy. So 
So why this is booting, let me just discuss a little bit on the uh, next few labs. Uh, this is just so we can have like a basic uh, sandbox environment to run. Uh, the next two operating systems we're going to install is going to be those two Windows boxes. However, we're not going to be making uh, the, the same golden images of those because they're going to be a one-time use type of thing. We're not going to be like making a bunch of them. It's just going to be like two Windows boxes in the whole entire environment. So there is no need to make any golden images. So one of those is going to be a domain controller and the other one is going to be a bash and host. Uh, what a bash and host is, is like a box that you connect to that gives you access to your network. So basically like you cannot access your network if you don't connect to the bash and host. So that's basically why we're going to set it up, which is a very uh, common application of the kind of um, uh, setup, uh, both for compliance reasons, organizations will set it up like that, and also for security as well. Uh, it's basically one edge point uh, into the system. So if you can see here, uh, the mouse is working. Like if we make it big, you're going to see that CentOS is adapting well to the monitor. We don't have that little clunky small screen anymore. So this is a lot easier to even show you around uh, how the um, GNOME uh, GUI kind of works. Uh, which we're probably going to discuss a little bit in another class, in another uh, lab session. Uh, but right now, uh, all you need to know is that, you know, as you can see, this is basically what the clone procedure is. So we're just going to close this guy out. You don't need to save anything, just power it down. Uh, and for the process to make a clone for the, for the Ubuntu box is exactly the same. Just click here, clone making sure that you always generate new MAC addresses. And I'm just going to name this guy uh, Ubuntu clone. Clone. Next. Clone. And it's going to it just made a new box.